Welcome back. Welcome to the interview area. 2014 U.S. Open champion Michelle Wee. Michelle, we know how much this week means to you. You haven't played in the U.S. Open since 2018. What does it feel like to be back? It, it feels amazing. Um, you know, USGA really did it big this week. I mean, the whole setup with our locker room, um, you know, player hospitality, being here in Olympic Club. It's such a big week for the ladies this week, and um, it's truly an honor to be back, um, especially being you know, I guess a, a USGA champion, um, it always has a really special feel to it. Um, as of a few weeks ago, you hadn't played Olympic Club. Now you've played a few times. Talk to us about the course. It's tough, man. It's a, it's, it's a beast. And, you know, a couple of weeks when I played here, definitely the rough wasn't as long and uh, came out here. And it's pretty wild. <laughs> the rough is pretty thick. Ken? You mentioned 2019 KPMG might have been your last tournament. What does it mean to you to tee it up at a major championship again? Oh, it's 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 a really cool feeling um, being here. Um, I mean, I guess just staying at my house this, these two weeks is pretty nice. I've never had that happen before um, at a major tournament. But, um, you know, Hazeltine was an amazing venue. It was just a shame. You know, I just that whole week was clouded. I wasn't thinking straight. I just couldn't even see straight at that point. Um, and being here at Olympic Club at another amazing venue, um, it's, it's really fun. It's really amazing to be back. It's, it's, it's an honor. What have you been working on in your game since L.A.? Um... I have been working on my putting. <laughs> um, I f went, flew to Phoenix to see Stan Utley. Um, I've seen him before and definitely needed some guidance. I wasn't sure what I was doing even. <laughs> um, but just overall, just working on my game, um, you know, working on my fitness a little bit more. And Pat's really emphasizing the majors for rounding out the Solheim Cup team. How do you balance being an assistant captain this week with your return to the Open? It's been so much fun, um, honestly, being, you know, co-captains with Andrew Stanford and, you know, obviously with Pat Hurst. Uh, we've had weekly calls, sometimes um, multi-week calls, and it's just honestly such a blast to really get together. And, you know, we had a nice, um, you know, team call or um, whatever the top rankings called. And, you know, it's been a lot of fun connecting with the players in a different way, um, really trying to get to know them better, get to know their games better. Um, and obviously it's, it's a lot easier to do so when I'm on site. So I'm really taking advantage of this week, um, hopefully get paired with some people and, you know, really get to see their games and have a whole round to chat with them. What were your big takeaways from your time with Stan? Um, you know, I, I, I had a lesson with him um, a couple years ago, which I, you know, I always think about. So it was really nice to um, kind of refresh the things that I was doing. Um, I think stepping away from the game for that long, um, it felt like with my swing, um, it was really natural. It came back. Um, with my pun, I think it's just like the really small things. I just forgot. I even forgot like what drills to do. I was like, what am I even doing? <laughs> um, I, my old in the club, how am I doing anything? So it was really nice to see him um, and refresh and kind of just nothing new. Just uh, remember what I was doing before. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Michelle, evidence appears to be mounting daily that there, that being among the best athletes at what you do can be hazardous to your mental health. And I'm wondering how you've managed to negotiate what almost seems like an unavoidable trap given your hard wiring and the stresses and expectations that are there for you. I mean, totally. I mean, I think it's been... You know, my lows have definitely been well documented um, throughout the years. And, you know, there's a lot of tough times, um, you know. You know, what I thought what Naomi did um, this past week was incredibly brave. Um, you know, I also understand that part of being an athlete is um, speaking to the media because, um, you know, that's, how the tournaments get done is through media coverage. But I, from a player perspective, I am totally understanding. It's that I have, you know, I, I do get anxiety, you know, talking to media like right before I, because I know it's the same questions every week. Um, and, you know, you guys are just doing your job. Um, and I really appreciate that. I really appreciate, um, you know, the media covering women's sports in general. But um, definitely as a player, it gets tough, especially after having a bad round. You know, the last thing you want to do is talk to anyone. Um, you know, it, so it's, it, it's tough, um, especially when you're not 
doing well or are you you know there's there's a lot more to life than your game like there's could be other stuff happening um you know it is uh it is sometimes crippling at times but you know really proud of you know athletes taking um, charge of their mental health and making it a priority and uh, you know more conversations need to be had about that hi michelle um I saw that you trained with Steph Curry back before the match too. Can you talk to me a little bit about that training session? And do you learn something elite athlete to elite athlete about picking up any tips or what'd you learn from Steph? Oh, we just had a fun round. Um, you know, it's just, I mean, he is such an elite athlete. He is just in a, a league of his own, you know, um, his athleticism, um, his golf game, you could just really tell. I mean, he, what he can do with his hands is just unbelievable. And um, watching him this season has been so incredible to watch. Uh, just, it, it's unbelievable. Every game he plays, I'm like, what is he going to do now? What an amazing thing. Um, and, you know, it's obviously unfortunate. I wish they were still in the playoffs um, or in the playoffs. But um, there's a lot of great things to come. Um, so just watching, I feel like I'm hopefully absorbing some of the greatness. <laughs> do you know, is he going to be out here this week? Um, I don't know. I think they were definitely talking about it. Um, you know, I know the, the guys on the team were super excited about the U.S. Women's Open being here at Olympics. So, um, yeah, maybe. Thanks. Steve? Michelle, in the hopes of asking a different question, weather turns <laughs> cold, and I saw a lot of LPGA hoodies this morning. Yeah. Can you, can you talk through the, how you created that product, and could you have ever imagined it being as successful as it's been? Oh, it's, it's been so great. Um, you know, uh, my friend took a, a picture. It was a random guy wearing it at a Warriors game. And I was like, wow, that's, that's so amazing. And what the coolest part about this is that the large sizes sold out first. Um, so we really <laughs> thought it was going to be the smalls, you know, like the ladies. You know, and the support from the ladies have been great. But surprisingly, the large, extra large sold out first within hours, which is crazy. Um, but yeah, I joined the board this year, and one of the things I, I wanted to do, I guess, being a younger generation, you know, the power of merchandise. You see so many artists, and um, you know, obviously, the Warriors have great merchandise, like NBA teams. I just feel like the, you know, I was really inspired by the WNBA hoodie um, and what that did for their league. Um, so I brought the idea to Roberta Bauman, and we really worked on it. She and the team at LPGA has done such an amazing job. Um, you know, I, I didn't know how to do graphic designing at all, so I just sent him, like, inspo pictures, but they really brought it to life, um, you know, and all the proceeds going to the two charities. It's It's been really, really amazing, the support, um, and just people wearing it, tagging me on Instagram. It just makes my day, seeing the different types of people wearing it and, um, you know, kids wearing it um, and people that you don't expect to wear it. Um, I think it was really great, all the basketball players giving it support. Because I know that they, they love our tour. They love, you know, supporting our tour. So we wanted to create an item that was really tangible and easy to wear and easy to show your support. Two more, Bethann. Michelle, I know you still take great care of your wrists. Does the rough worry you at all this week? Oh, yeah, definitely. I look at it, I'm like, ah. <laughs> 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 it's terrifying, um, you know, but... I'm doing the best I can. Um, you know, I have my devices at home, um, and I do all of them. I go through all my PT stuff. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I knew when I signed up to come out and play again, especially at the U.S. Open, I knew that it was going to happen. I wasn't expecting to come out and there to be no rough. Um, yeah, does it worry me? Yes. Um, but the last couple of days, um, I hit a lot of shots out of the rough, and I, I'm feeling um, pretty confident about it. But... You know, it, is, it, it will always be what it is. You know, I'm playing definitely on borrowed time, um, and I'm grateful for every second of it. Thank you. Michelle, in 2007, when you were going through that first round of wrist injuries, I stumbled on a quote where you were asked basically all the people criticizing you and judging you, how do you deal with that? And you said something like, well, I'm trying to do my job reporters have their job to do and I'm wondering you were so young then like was that bravado or where did that poise or perspective come from I mean that seemed like a sign that even then you were able to navigate it better than many people do yeah I mean I think everyone has their own role everyone's just you know trying to live their life the best that they can and you know we have different jobs you know we're definitely on the two side I mean we're definitely on two sides <laughs> right now but um, you know everyone is entitled to their own opinion everyone is entitled to 
um, do their job at the best of capability and ability. Um, and I'm just trying to do mine um, at my best ability. So I think if, you know, if we all just understand each other, I think just human to human, um, you know, I think it's great. I think, um, you know, I think you guys have been pretty fair. Um, and, you know, I'm just trying to do the best I can. So Thank you. good place to end. Thanks, Michelle. Thank you.